This isn't my model. It was actually given to me in person when I went to Warhammer Fest in the UK. The owner purposely brought it to Warhammer Fest so I could repaint it. I'm not gonna lie, when he showed me the model, I was so confused. I thought he did an incredible job and I would be proud to call this my own. Unfortunately, he was having a really bad day, his car had broken down and he needed to leave the event early, but he insisted that I repaint this model. How the hell could I say no? I better do a damn good job. Hi guys and welcome back to Mavericks Paint. Check it out. It's like I'm a real YouTuber. I got the blue and the orange. RGB, I don't know. For those of you who are new here, this is a series I like to call plastic surgery. Basically what I do is, people send me models of sentimental value but that they wish could be repainted. I therefore take the model, strip it down, repaint it, then send it back to them. I don't charge anything for this service, it's just kind of my way of giving back to this community. So get comfortable, maybe get a tasty drink, sit back, relax, and let's paint a Black Templar. For those wondering, the green liquid is called Simple Green. It's a gentle cleanser that you can find at stores like Home Depot. I let the model soak for a few hours, then gently remove the paint with a toothbrush. You might not get it all off in one soak. Simply place the model back in Simple Green and let it soak for another hour or so, then try again with the toothbrush. If the paint is super stubborn, I'll use AK Interactive's Paint Stripper. You don't want to soak your model in this though. It's a lot stronger than Simple Green and we want to make sure we don't melt the model. Seriously, I've come back to some puddles of plastic so be careful. And it's also a lot more expensive. So just soak your toothbrush in the paint stripper, then apply it to the model. Once the paint is removed, I try to tidy up any forgotten mold lines with my hobby knife and sanding sponge. It might seem like a headache now, but it'll save you a lot of grief later on when you're trying to paint. Once you're done, make sure you get all of the plastic shavings off of the model. I decided to keep the head separate to make things easier later on. I haven't painted many Black Templars, but this model is fantastic. It's actually a near-perfect replica of the John Blanche art from 1998. John Blanche is often thought of as the grandfather of Grimdark, and is probably the most notorious Warhammer artist in the business. Definitely worth checking out if you're ever in need of some inspiration. I give the model a quick prime with my airbrush, but you can use a shaker can just as easily. This is the only time I'll be using an airbrush in this video. For the black armor, I'll be using Vallejo Black, Scale 75's Petro Gray, AK Interactive's Basalt Gray, and Vallejo's Neutral Gray. For the black armor, I'm not totally sure what I'm doing yet. I'm just going to slap down some gray highlights for now, but I'll revisit it later on. The reason for this is because black armor can be very tricky. It's super easy to accidentally add too many highlights and create gray or blue armor. I like to talk about the history of the model and its significance to the owner. The owner's name is Matt and we didn't have much time to chat at Warhammer Fest because he actually had to leave early due to car troubles. Fortunately, I managed to reach out to him after and get a little bit of backstory. This is when I found out that the main reason he asked me to repaint this model was because he wanted to own a model that I painted. He said that my Instagram was one of the first accounts he started to follow when he got back into the hobby and he's been a massive fan ever since. This is something I'm still not used to hearing. In fact, I don't think I'll ever be used to the idea that I have fans or people that might look up to me in some way. Maybe that's just some imposter syndrome, but it honestly leaves me confused and at a loss for words every time. Regardless, I am so grateful and honored that I could help you on your painting journey in any way. For the gold pieces of this model, I like to keep things simple. I use XV88, Baylor Brown, and Ice Yellow and slowly build up the intensity of the reflection towards the light source. Now, when Matt started painting this model, life managed to get in the way and interrupted his workflow. He ended up not finishing the model but continued to paint and improve his skill. He wasn't sure how to finish it since the first and second half would look like entirely different artists painted it. I think that's one of the best parts of this hobby. The more we paint and enjoy ourselves, the more we improve. There is no better feeling in the world than witnessing our own progress in something we enjoy in life. Whether it's painting models or getting stronger in the gym, or maybe getting over something mentally like a bad breakup. 
Self-improvement is addictive and that's why this hobby can have such a profound benefit on our mental health. There's actually studies tied specifically to painting miniatures and delaying Alzheimer's. For the gold, I'm mapping out where the highlights should be placed with XV88. This will typically cover about 60% of the surface with the other 40% being left black. Make sure you cover all your edges with this color. People often debate metallic versus non-metallic paint and honestly, who cares? Both are great and it all just comes down to preference. Metallic paints are a lifesaver for time and they have real light reflections. Non-metallic paint is a fun challenge that can be really satisfying when done well. It's all just about enjoying yourself in the moment. After we lay down our XV88, we then move on to Baylor Brown and paint it within the XV88, but in a smaller area. We repeat this process with our final highlight, Ice Yellow. When it comes to non-metallic painting, it's important to try to maximize contrast. Shadows and highlights will take the main stage, while midtones are really only there to remind you of the original color of the surface. For the bolter, I used my usual red recipe of Galvorback, Corn, Evil Suns, and just a little bit of Wild Rider. Red paint can have some pretty weak coverage, so be prepared to do a few thin coats before moving on to the next highlight. I created a slight gradient of color going from dark around the grip to bright around the barrel. I also gave it a quick edge highlight and yes, I painted that damn Templar engraving in non-metallic metal. I don't know why. It looks as though there is a small canister for the flamer's fuel and these are typically painted with a copper appearance. Copper is kind of a weird color. It's kind of a red, brown, orange, peach sort of thing. These are the colors I like to mix but I'm still not totally comfortable with it yet. For the big pauldrons, I knew I needed some sort of bone recipe to match that of the John Blanche artwork. Jose da Vinci is a world-class painter that competes in the Golden Demon competitions. His YouTube channel is full of useful tutorials and I loved how he painted this skeleton. I decided to use this tutorial and I was pretty pleased with the brown tone it creates. Definitely go check out his channel for awesome tutorials. Sorry if my voice is a little raspy. I managed to get COVID somewhere on my trip to the UK. I'm no longer positive, but I actually have a ton of aches and pains now and my jaw really hurts for some reason. I don't know if you guys have had it yet, but it's such a bizarre virus. I somehow missed these extra bits of gold, so I needed to double back and cover them. These simple shapes make mapping out our highlights really easy. As a quick tip for non-metallic metal, make sure you always cover your edges. Metal catches a lot of light on hard edges, so you want to make sure every edge has at least some color on it. The final highlight of Ice Yellow is what really sells the metallic appearance of this gold. Don't be afraid to create large highlights. A common mistake I see with people attempting non-metallic metal for the first time is that they worry too much about blending and eventually paint themselves into a corner. They only leave enough room for a tiny little dot for their max highlight. If you've noticed, I don't even blend my gold. It's the ratios that are most important in my opinion. The same concept applies to steel as it does gold. After basing the blade of the ax in a dark blue gray, I map out some large highlights. One for the sun and sky, and another for the light bouncing off of the surroundings. In the future, I'll be making a video that focuses solely on non-metallic metal for beginners, where we paint an entire space marine in full non-metallic metal. I decided to spice up this flat surface of the axe by bringing in a little bit of rust. I used Mornfang and Scrag Brown and let it build up near the recesses. I know some of you hate the idea of rust on Space Marines, but imagine how long some battles must last for. Space Marines don't even require sleep and against a horde of orcs, battles could last literal years. I always try to paint the heads of models separately from the rest of the miniature because it can be tricky to get into the tiny areas. The head of the model is without a doubt the most important part and is naturally where our eyes will end up when looking at a model. I just use a small brass wire from the hobby store, some super glue, and a cork. For the cloth, I kept things a bit darker. I didn't want it to be as bright as the chest and shoulders because it might confuse the viewer into thinking they are the same material. These are small things to consider when painting your models. It won't make a huge difference, but it'll help give clarity to the viewer. 
Oftentimes, the greatest success in painting is that your model is painted in a way that the viewer's eyes can immediately distinguish what they're looking at. If you need to squint and study the model to determine what you're looking at, you may be lacking some visual clarity. That's why we often edge highlight in miniature painting, because it defines our model's shapes. While I finish up a few extra details, I'd like to give a big shout out to my newest Patreon members. Your guys' support allows me to create the content I enjoy and means the world to me. Cypher Mutt, Frederick Schlichtrol, Cy F. Raptor, Liam B., Leo Nicholas, M. Olney, Connor Borkhart, D. Green, Malfis, Michael Holtz, Seymour Millen, Sushi, Gordon Bakmura, Prancer Cubed Squared, Randy Warhols, Cal Quinn, Magos Terra, Tobias. Also, a huge shout out to my friend Adam, or Painting Shambles, on Instagram. He's always giving me incredible advice, and he's an absolute legend when it comes to mini painting. Definitely worth checking out. With that said, Matt, I hope you enjoy your brand new Black Templar Castellan. <laughs>